as we get here on the national hour, get closer to fall, get into the fall weather. The fall classic is now approaching us. We got to talk some baseball, Jeff, oh, yeah. as the playoffs are just a few weeks away. Yeah, really, right now we're starting to plan out who is going to make the postseason, who really is out of it, who is going to potentially come back and steal a wild card spot. Maybe they're in like the AL or NL. And right now, I think the one of the races out there right now, AL West, Oakland, Texas, they are very close to each other in the standings. And this has got to be a close one going down the stretch. I mean, a couple games. A one series, that's all it's going to take for one team to get bumped out, of the, bumped out of the division in the AL West. Yeah, so right now Texas and Oakland playing each other in a three-game series and splitting the series, they're literally tied atop mm -hmm. the AL West. So it's going to be so, yeah. a fun last few weeks for those teams out there in Oakland and uh, in the Dallas Fort Worth area mm -hmm. watching the Rangers. But really, between those two teams, every game matters now. I mean, it doesn't seem like that. You can let a couple go, but really, when you're this gridlocked in the standings, Every game matters, and I really think every at-bat, every pitch, you got to make the most of it because all, for all you know, one loss, and you could slip out, and then the dominoes could just start falling. You might miss the postseason. And, you know, everyone coming into this year expecting Texas to be there. They knew what they had with uh, good offense. Uh, Nelson Cruz obviously mm -hmm. is uh, suspended for the rest of the year, but their offense is still rolling. But the team that no one was expecting was the Oakland A's, and yeah, they yeah, are that. playing great baseball. People, when you think AOS, you're thinking, oh, it's got to be the Angels. This team it had to be stacked. the Angels, how much I mean, money they paid. Yeah, right, right. right. There's so much money invested in that team. This team is going to make it, and they didn't make it. I believe they're behind Seattle in the stands. Oh, they're like it, 14 and a half It's out absurd, it. and really for Oakland, that slips right into the limelight. Now they're tied for first, the chance to take the AL West. Exceeding expectations there in Oakland. Yeah, and it's a tight race again. No game separating the top, tied atop of the division, Oakland and Texas. So it's going to be a really great race to watch going into the postseason. Another division that's really close, three and a half games separating the top three teams in the NL Central. The Reds three and a half out of it right now. Pittsburgh is up one game on St. Louis. So those three teams still battling. Really, last week, St. Louis was like the team with the, just a slight lead over Pittsburgh. Now it's like a role reversal. Pittsburgh is now taking over over St. Louis. Cincinnati is still in that three-and-a-half game slot. No team is out of it, but I think right now Pittsburgh, I think, is a vulnerable here because St. Louis, this team, they know how to win. I think they can charge right back up there in the standings and take Pittsburgh. But really, three-and-a-half games out, three teams. This is going to be a very fun thing to watch down the stretch, Darius. And uh, one fun thing that we can watch right now is uh, this uh, Brandon Phillips clip as he's showing that uh, the stress of the postseason is starting to get to him. Hey, Dusty, the fat is on the end. He, he worries about my own base percentage. Don't you tell him. Have, tell him I'm having bad eight, though you worry about my own base percentage. I don't care fat about that. Fat mother <laughs> Make him happy, Dusty. Fat mother <laughs> I'm telling you, you're talking that negative shit on the team, dog. I find out your Twitter name now, mother It's a wrap. Wow, took you how many so years? So, Brandon Phillips, he, uh, he's, he's uh, a little heated yeah, right now. Yeah, extremely heated. I really yeah. think I, when you start saying that he, his numbers are slipping, he should move down the stings, I mean, it's understandable because he, he's been one of the constant hitters there in Cincinnati. I think a combination of he, wants, he knows he can hit in the top of the lineup at the same time. People are getting on because, hey, Cincinnati made the postseason last year. Great expectations this season. Maybe take the division. You're three and a half back. With, and with Arizona and Washington on your heels, I, it, all the pressure starting to mount there in Cincinnati. Well, here's the thing. I'm, I don't understand why they're questioning him so much as Joey Votto, who's had you know, another really good year. Mm -hmm. But I expected more out of Votto and certainly expected more out of Jay Bruce. Who's, yeah. he's, I mean, if anybody's been disappointing on that offense, it's been Bruce. I mean, really, I think for Cincinnati, for that thing, Phillips, he's carried the load and people are going after him. So it's one of these things where it's like, it's the press. It's going to happen, but I think at the same time, I think it could be aimed at somebody else instead of Brandon Phillips. Well, if anybody wants to go at Brandon Phillips on Twitter, that dude, yeah, yeah, he, yeah. that is his uh, Twitter <laughs> handle, so you can get at him and put your input in. Uh, Brandon Phillips, he's always been entertaining and fun to watch. Absolutely. And he's, he's one of those guys. He'll go back and forth with the fans anyway, so it's not that surprising to hear him go after a reporter. I mean, really nice, especially it's baseball. I mean, we've seen guys, we've seen Lou Pinello freak out over people. We've seen Managers go up to umps. I mean, it's just just how the game works. So looking at the wild card, the NL is pretty much settled. It's going to be either Pittsburgh or St. Louis or Cincinnati, Cincinnati. Who, whoever doesn't win that division. Atlanta is so far up on all the teams in the NL East. Yeah. It's going to be just Atlanta in that division, and the Dodgers have really separated. Yeah. But, you know, Arizona still has a fighting chance, but it, we pretty much know who it is. 
for the NL. Yeah. For I, the AL, on the other hand, Texas, Oakland, whoever doesn't win there, Tampa Bay, Baltimore, New York, there's a lot of teams who can yeah. make damage in, or I mean, do a run in the AL. It really is. I think looking at that, you got it all comes down to Texas, Oakland. If they one of the teams starts falling apart, I mean, it's any team's game there, especially with the Yankees who – a Rod, he can might help him a little bit down the stretch. I don't know how much, but he's there. Jeter, back. Cleveland, uh, with the, not out of it. They're Frank mathematically Kona. still there. With Frank Kona, if they get hot. Really, for any team, if they get on a roll, they can shoot right up into the standings. But it's a lot, a lot easier said than done, though. And, and it's so weird to think because even for the Yankees, I mean, just a month ago, they they felt like they were so far out of it. Yeah. They were almost double digit out of their uh, division. Mm-hmm. Now. They've closed the gap. They're right there in the wild card. There's no reason that team cannot make the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, you're right, Darius. The Yankees, they were at one point, it's like they were dead in the water in the standings. Now they, there's a, a very good fighting chance here. And as we said earlier, all it takes is one team to lose a couple games and another team to win a couple games. And it's a whole new perspective in the postseason. All right, so looking at some of uh, the postseason awards that may be hashed out, I think we can agree that Cy Young is going to be Scherzer in the AL and probably going to be Clayton Kershaw on the NFL. Yeah, those two are just a clear club. I mean, Scherzer, he's, I don't think he can get any better pitching for Detroit. I mean, you thought Verlander was good, Scherzer, he has been phenomenal. And I think for Kershaw, that entire run with the Dodgers were just unbeatable. I think that's enough to just say, hey, here's your vote. You're going to be the Cy Young. I think those two are almost certain locks for postseason awards. Now, the debate comes down to Rookie of the Year. National League Rookie of the Year, Yasiel Puig hitting 351, 14 home runs, 32 RBI, or Jose Fernandez with the Marlins, who not a lot of people have heard of, 10-6 mm-hmm. record, 2.33 ERA for the Rook. Who would you go with? I think they're both good, but I think Yasiel Puig, mostly because the team is on, is on a roll. I think if the Marlins were slightly better, I would look at Fernandez, but I think for Puig, during the run, when he came up, the Dodgers were unstoppable. I really think is that the 351 average of 14 homers, that's big. I really think he, he should walk out with it as Rookie of the Year. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to have the last segment and final stories for you here on the National Hour.